In the same way we've seen that every person plays a part, we will also learn how every part of a song plays a part. I'm going to open up my Your Voice is Power script in your sketch. When I run the script, listen to the code. As you listen, think about the music and these questions. Does the code sound like a song you might hear on the radio or YouTube? If it doesn't, what is missing? What makes up a song or musical composition? What makes a piece of music a composition rather than a few beats strung together? So you're going to think about those two things when you listen to my beats. between your code and a musical composition or song you might hear on the radio is structure. Most songs you hear on the radio or YouTube have an arrangement that includes sections where you will hear different and repeating forms through one piece of music. The most popular song structure is the verse-chorus structure. Often the verse-chorus structure is also called ABAB, where the song cycles between verse and chorus. This is common with many hip-hop songs where the verse A is spoken and the chorus B is sung. As the song moves from section A to section B, there is often a change in tempo, beat, or musical notes. Think about the entrepreneur song. Do you think it fits the verse chorus structure? Do you notice changes between different song sections? Let's learn more about these sections of a song and try to see if we can identify them in entrepreneur. So we're going to get back to some vocabulary. In your assignment document, you're going to go to slide 5, which is part 4, build your toolkit. We're going to learn about these five different terms. Okay, so a chorus, the section of the song that has the same lyrics and melody repeated throughout the song between verses. This is your earworm, what is most memorable from your song. So think about your favorite song and what about the chorus sticks in your head? Could it be the beat or the lyrics or maybe a combination? Verse. Verses complete the body of the song and provide variety between repeated choruses. Verses generally share the same melody with slight variations but different lyrics. There are usually multiple verses during a song. But Entrepreneur and many other songs are often more complex than just two different repeating sections. Songs can also have more complex structures. A song could have a bridge added toward the end to build up to the final chorus or it could have an intro and outro section. So here's an example of a more complex song, something more like um, the Entrepreneur song. Bridge. This generally short section of the song has a different melody and lyric from any other section. It often is used toward the middle or end of the song to build up to the chorus. Not every song has a bridge. Transitions are short passages of music that combine musical sections. The goal of the transition is to grab the listener's attention and let them know a change is about to occur. Some examples of transitions are crash cymbal, drum fill, track dropouts, melody variation, and risers. Intro and outro. Song sections that often contain only music, no words, and build the feeling of the song. These are used to open or close the song. Both intros and outros may use tempo and volume as methods to build and fade mood in the song. Let's now analyze the structure of Entrepreneur. I'm going to play the song out loud and I want you to, to use the labels intro, verse, chorus, bridge, outro to label the different parts of the song. So on your assignment document, now you're going to go to the next two pages, page six, and page seven and this is where all the lyrics are and you can see to the left there's a place for you to write what type of music do you think it is so as I play the, the music video let's see if you can uh, write down the part of each section
Okay, this is the final result. You can check your answers to see how well you did. So what did you notice about the sections of the Entrepreneur Song? Did they follow a specific order? Did you hear repetition of melody or musical sounds or lyrics within the song? And why do you think songs include repeating sections? And did you hear a contrast between the verse and the chorus? Why is there a contrast between the sections? Now that you know how to structure a song, it's time to add that structure to your code. It's time to transform our code into a song. How do we do this without writing lines and lines of code? We already have, you know, around 40 lines of code and we only coded 16 measures. Imagine you want to code a two minute song. You might end up with 150 lines of code. Whoa, that is exhausting to think about. Mike is feeling the same way. He is ready to finish the whole song of Entrepreneur but needs Shalise to show him how to do it, so he is not coding all day. Watch this video to learn about the coding magic of custom functions to provide structure to your song. Wasn't that amazing? Shalise was able to define her own functions to create a verse and a chorus without writing lines and lines of code. Now it is our turn to practice writing these custom functions in Nearsketch. You have already used many functions in your sketch, such as fit media and set tempo, but now you will actually create your own functions. Here's another term to write in your notes. Custom function. Custom functions are written by the programmer to accomplish a specific task, often a task that must be done more than once. Custom functions are an effective way to code sections, helping to avoid repeti repetitive code. Functions are named by the programmer, can have any number of inputs or arguments, and can be called anywhere in a script. Functions not only make your code shorter, it gives you the opportunity to create complex code that can be easily repeated without error. So look at the example function. All functions need to be defined and include inputs. You will need to place a colon at the end of your function and then indent your tracks below the function. So you can see the example on this slide. You've got the function name, verse, two inputs, a start and end, and a colon. And then you're going to use the start and end where we used our beginning measure and our end measure. And I'll do another video that will show you how to do this. After your, you section your song, you will call, call those custom functions. What does it mean to call your custom function? This is when you tell the computer to play the verse or chorus or intro, or bridge, or transition. On specific measures, if you want your verse to play measures 1 to 5, your call will be verse 1 to 5, like the example on line right there on line 67. Remember Mike's advice, each verse or chorus plays in multiples of 4. Okay, and we've been using multiples of 8. Okay, now we're going to get into ear sketch, and I'm going to walk you through this process of, we've already got some functions, so how do I include some parameters? And then you're going to have an opportunity to add some more functions. So right now, if you only have an intro and a verse, maybe you want to add a chorus, a bridge, a transition, a second verse. And then you're going to end with a bunch of function calls. And notice that you can call some of them over and over again. On line 41, I called transition 1. And then I also called it again on line 44. And so you can repeat your code and that's going to be kind of the beauty of it is once you have a function you can use it as often as you want you're just going to pass in a different argument to that parameter so we'll go through all of that together in the next video for lesson four then when we're done you're going to have your exit ticket and thank you very much for your participation congratulations you have now transformed your cool beats into a song continue to add custom functions to lengthen your songs and add more variety keep remixing and building your code